Hi, I'm Douglas Keong, and this is the Wearable Classroom. I'm going to talk a little bit about data, because I think when you think about wearable technology, it really starts with the data that you're collecting, and specifically the idea that data tells a story. And it used to be that we were capturing more data than we can analyze. Not anymore, because technology is moving faster than our ability to capture it or regulate uh, the capture of it, as the case may be. So let me start with a quick story. This is about a store called Target, and it, Target has one of the most advanced um, systems for capturing data uh, on its consumers, all different kinds of data. And they were in the news recently because they assign you a Target customer ID and they started studying the buying habits of different people. And specifically, one of the things that they looked at is they started looking at the buying habits of people who set up baby registries and something that they found out that they had in common was that women who were pregnant tended to buy lots of unscented lotion and then they also bought lots of magnesium and zinc supplements close to their uh, beginning of their third trimester and so turns out Target was actually able to accurately predict if a customer was pregnant and they would start to send you coupons and at one point um, a f some father got irate and said, why are you sending my daughter all of these diaper coupons? She doesn't even have a boyfriend. And about a, you know, they, they apologized and said, we're really sorry. We'll remove you from our database. And I guess about a week later, the story goes, the father calls back and he says, I guess I owe you an apology. Apparently there was more going on under my roof than I, uh, than I realized. And so when you think about that idea that Target knows you're pregnant before your family does, that that's where people get creeped out. That's where the whole wearable technology thing bothers people in this capturing of data. And Douglas Copeland, I thought, put it very aptly. He talked about data plus machine intelligence equals what he calls artificial intuition in the sense that we're capturing so much data, we're analyzing it, and we can actually come up with a form of predictive analysis to find out whether things are true or if things are going to happen before they happen. Now this isn't all bad. Uh, Apple and Johns Hopkins University, for example, are collaborating on an app called EpiWatch. And the collection of data and the analysis of it, you know, it's really, it's agnostic, right? It depends on how you use it. So the EpiWatch is designed to, they're studying people who are suffering from epilepsy. And they're keeping track of all these biological statistics before, during, and after people have seizures. They use a daily journal, interactive surveys, uh, things you can do on the watch, for example. And the goal is to gather enough data so that after they've studied all of these people over the course of a year, they're hopefully going to be able to come up with some predictive analysis to be able to determine if you are at risk of having a seizure. So they can say, you know, you may want to uh, drink some water or get out of the sun or get off the road or, or whatever it, it happens to be. And, and what's fascinating, I think, for us as teachers is to think about can we use this kind of predictive analysis to discover which kinds of students are likely to fail? Uh, which students are going to be having trouble? We only have a limited amount of time. And so how can we be a little bit more targeted about the kids that we intervene and help, perhaps even before they get into the place where, you know, it might be a little too late to help them. Uh, so I think it's interesting to think about data and think about what kind of information would you collect. So let's think about another story, and this is purely hypothetical. And uh, so this takes place, you know, a number of years in the future. And there's a straw poll. It's not live now, but normally when I when I uh, when I give this, I'll have an audience do it. And it's interesting to see where people fall on this idea of let's imagine your daughter's in fifth grade, and you have the ability to find out because you, her Apple Watch, let's say, is tracking her physiological uh, stress level. Um, suppose you received a text message on your watch that said it's lunchtime, it's 11.30 a.m., your daughter is crying and she's upset. Is that information that you want to know at that point? And when I do this straw poll, it usually is pretty, you know, it, it usually most people say I don't really feel like I want to know that because there's not anything that I can do right now about it. Maybe it's better that the teacher should know. 
Um, but, you know, uh, certainly I think as parents we have a right to know. I think we'd be upset if there was that information that was out there that our kid was upset and we, you know, the school was, you know, hiding that from us. If there were a way to find out that your child was upset, people would generally want to know about that. And so that gets into lots of leadership questions around the ownership of data and the collection of data, those kinds of things. Uh, but let's say on Monday she's upset. It's not really going to do me a whole lot of good to know that she's upset. But suppose we find out that every day that week your daughter is upset and she's crying and she's in the lunchroom. Now it could be every afternoon she comes home and you say, how was school? She says it was fine. You never know about it. But in this case, if there's a pattern, perhaps that's something that parents would want to know because there's a trend. There's something that's going on with her where she's upset every day. The teacher may notice it on Monday. She may miss it on Tuesday and Wednesday. She may see she's upset again on Thursday, but perhaps the teacher misses that, but the watch doesn't. And the fact that it's capturing this data, data can tell a story over time. And that's one of the most powerful things about wearable technology. And, you know, maybe that's a case where you raise the red flag with a teacher and you talk to them about it. So I think this is just some of the promise of what wearable technology can do. But it also raises lots of very interesting questions around management of that data. And so that's why I've come up with these top three wearable technology predictions. So my first prediction is that data is going to continue to be collected regularly on every student in the classroom. If you think about it, we already do it with a Fitbit and with physical fitness. It's only a matter of time before we start collecting data, things like perhaps physiological stress factors, perhaps sleep. How much sleep is a student getting on a given day when they come into school? How much sleep did they get the night before? Did they eat a good breakfast? Um, some course management systems already track whether students have turned in assignments late. Does this student have a history of turning things in late? Uh, good teachers probably, we might remember that about some or even most kids, but we probably aren't going to remember all of the kids. The technology can actually flag that. And I think in the future, we're going to be much better and much more precise about using predictive analysis to help identify students who are in danger of failing and whom we can help. And then that's sort of the, that's the good side of it. Um, here is the side that's kind of more interesting. I think in the future students are going to use their data to give themselves a competitive edge. Um, you know, suppose uh, a student is typically very prone to mood swings and they have been having their data collected over the course of high school and their data shows that they tend to swing wildly from you know back and forth or maybe they're prone to fits of depression uh, there are some schools that are very competitive schools that could potentially say there are many good schools across the United States uh, for students who already struggle with depression and with high stress levels this is a very rigorous stressful school this may not be the right place for you um, should a school like that have the ability when students apply to see a record of that student's mood over the past four years? And conversely, if students are using their data to give themselves a competitive edge, could a student who is chronically in a good mood and fairly level-headed be able to say, since, let's face it, the most competitive schools are getting a ton of uh, college applications, should they be able to also submit their biometric data that shows that over the course of four years, all the stresses of high school life, that this student is a very calm, level-headed person? Should that give that student a competitive edge? Perhaps they're submitting that information voluntarily. Does that help give the admissions committee a bit more data to consider about that student's mental frame of mind? Very interesting question. I do think that there is this tension between public and private ownership of data and there will be the first I'm sure there will be a Supreme Court case over intellectual property rights with regard to personal data who owns that personal data who owns the data that's being collected by schools who owns your attendance record for example whose business is it to see all of these different things that you're collecting so I think for leaders in schools, we should consider, is there an acceptable use policy about how data is collected, how it's analyzed? I think if we 
don't get out in front of this and start thinking about how do we manage the kinds of data that we're collecting around students. Um, there, it, you know, there's a there's a big potential for there to be issues and conflict around that. So, you know, it's not all bad. It's a lot of exciting stuff out there. But when we think about wearable technology and the very personal nature of a lot of these devices and the data that they're collecting transparently and visibly throughout the day, uh, it presents some challenges as well as some really exciting opportunities.